All right, this morning we're going to continue part two, and TempDB is growing out of control. And we're going to highlight specifically in, in this video, I'm going to cover just briefly about temp tables and temp table usage and identifying those usages. Now, every environment's different, and so this will not work in some environments, and it's because of how everything is structured. One of the things that companies call me to consult on a lot is their environment is they have usually multiple developers and their environment's kind of out of control and I'm able to identify things very quickly like, okay, so this is how you've built your environment. And so some environments, as you'll see, they're just not built this way. So you can't make this assumption. It's important to understand um, that there is a built-in assumption here and that is that we're looking on the back end, we're looking at the actual database level about uh, temp tables, okay? So temp tables do use tempdb and we are going to look at identifying how those temp tables are used. So what I'm doing here is I'm selecting from the sys comments where a temp table is or where temp tables are being used and I get back one object. Just to show how this works, let's suppose I'm going to create a procedure and I'm going to call it stp uh, temp table procedure and I'm going to select um, star into a global temp table from this table here and then select star from the global temp table. By the way, as a div I mean as a consultant, I can tell you right off the bat this is an insanely stupid stored procedure and this is insanely stupid code um, and but this is something that actually exists in a lot of environments so if I call or if I build this and then I go back here and I look for all the temp table usage as you'll see it now appears and this is occurring on the database level okay so that's an example that's a simple example of how we can look and we can see how temp tables are being used on the database level and I can then look and evaluate from there you know for instance how since these temp tables are being used at this database level then how are those let's say stored procedures in this case views whatever it is how are those being called how are those being used in the actual application okay so um, and then when I speak to environments about this, my belief is that consultants don't just solve problems. As a consultant, I also inform their developers. There, are, there aren't a lot of developers, and this isn't a bad thing. Developers have a lot of work to do as far as, especially if they're object-oriented programmers, whether that's PHP, C Sharp, you name it. So they know a lot of things about, let's say, their object-oriented end, but there's very little information on the database end. And there's two reasons why this is. First of all, it takes an enormous time, amount of time and energy, I should say, to be very good at object-oriented programming to understand all of the particulars there. There aren't a lot of people like myself who are functional object-oriented programmers, coders, which I don't really care about, you know, like enumeration and all that. That doesn't even matter to me. If it functions, it's good. That's, that's the extent of it. Trying to get the, what is it that they always say, the Google button to go 0 .00001 one second faster, I don't care about that. Like, that's that's the reason why I know a lot more about the database end is because there comes a point that your learning while you're getting faster is actually disabling you from learning something else which may be more important that's the first piece and depending on your environment you may need to learn about how to make something so fast that it takes point zero 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 one percent second one percent seconds faster I mean like that may actually be that environment that you work in. And then the other thing too as well is that colleges, they do a terrible job of, and it, it is the college structure, they do a terrible job of bringing on professors who know anything about databases. And again, it's because colleges bring on professors, you may or may not have noticed this, they generally have PhDs. The reason is if they brought on a professor, let's suppose they wanted to hire me and say, hey, we want you to teach a database class, they're not going to hire me because I don't have a PhD and then it doesn't look like you need a PhD so students are like wait wait why should I continue being in college so you have to hire somebody who has a lot of education credentials so that you can say see this is what college is for right like that's actually the purpose of that and so it's not that the professors are not intelligent it's just that if you go out and you get your PhD in things you often get very disconnected from reality and this is where when in the interviews I've had with a lot of people who let's say may have had a couple of database classes they have no practical knowledge of databases not because they didn't take a class but just because they don't know the application that's so disconnected from how databases are used this is true by the way with MySQL this is true with SQL Server MongoDB you name it 
you, you can pick the database. More often than not, if someone has taken a couple of classes in college on databases, they're going to come in very misinformed. And it's just the structure of it. It's not that people, anyone is not in trying to be ignorant. It's just how we use databases and how they're taught are often worlds apart. So in the example here, what we're doing is we're looking for these system objects that are accessing or that are creating a temp table because we're going to see the effects on temp DB. This is not something that you're going to see a lot in, in colleges because why we're doing this is because the effects that it's going to have on our environment and seeing the bigger picture. And so that's one of the reasons why um, you can't always rely necessarily on schools. That's not to say that any developer who doesn't understand it or any professor who doesn't understand it is ignorant. It's just to say that this is it's very difficult to be good at everything and so you kind of have to pick and choose. That's where going into it myself, I'm a functional coder, knowing that that's very important so that I can learn how this affects all these different environments.